fans, maybe you know, maybe you don't. But we lost a very special member of the Maryland football family this week. Watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Good afternoon from CQ Stadium as the Michigan fans continue to chant off to our left. Maryland falls 31-24 to undefeated Michigan. Terps were in the game. It, it was there for a moment. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason. Just talked to Bruce up in the press box. Mason, what did you see out there today? Yeah, um, plenty of times this year I've said that our program's a disaster, that it needs to do soul searching, that there's nothing to believe in, and today uh, they, they proved me wrong. They fought their hearts out. Thank you, I, I think it's a field storming, and uh, we'll we'll be back in a moment. Well, that was interesting there for a moment. Uh, that was Michigan's 1,000th win as a program, and apparently and, an excuse to uh, storm the field of an opposing team. I mean, uh, a little classless move there, but uh, from, from a classless so, program. Classless moves from classless programs. Hey, well, at least they're not cheap. Oh, uh, well, let's oh, not wait, bring not that up. Well, let's not bring that up. Uh, so, Maryland actually stood up today. I think that's where we left this. So, let's get back to that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've criticized the team, the program, when it's needed it, but today, you know, they, they really did. They fought. Um, definitely the refereeing of the game did not help uh, Mike Loxley's crew in, in any sort of way, but um, just didn't get it done. Had the ball twice with an opportunity to really make something happen, similar to the Ohio State game uh, last year. And look, our, our quarterback, our team, is is not a, a really good short yardage team, and it showed when the ball was on the one in the three-yard line uh, right here in the Gossett end zone and looked that ground and call. I mean... I, that's not the way I saw it. I was just about as far as the referee that threw the flag from it. Uh, I think the player is clearly in the area, but a lot of positives to take away from today. Again, you got to break through eventually because you keep preaching opportunity as a program, as a coach, and, and your guys are going to go out there. They're going to give you that maximum effort, and eventually they're just not going to believe. They're not going to make the next play, and that that's something that eventually you would hope that they just break through. They finally get one of these wins. They really prove themselves, but really great effort today. Uh, just did not, ball just did not bounce our way. Uh, look, we had a couple shots. Ball was in this end zone. Couldn't get the ball out of the end zone. Uh, other than that, there was a bad two-minute stretch. Merrill was up 3 nothing and turned around, they're down 16-3, to and they come back. Uh, the program had a, a pretty good moment, I think, in Nebraska when they finally got the sixth win. They played overall much better today. Now, Leah had the interceptions. Certainly plays that could have been made. Maryland scored more Our points than anybody else against Michigan NBA today. Win. And you know what? This We're going to go and see what Moxley had to say, and we'll be back for the second half of the postgame show after the press conference. So, Billy Edwards comes in. Second down. There's 30 seconds. They reset. 29 seconds to go in the corner. Heavy jumbo. Billy Edwards. Touchdown. Terrapins. Let's wait for the official word. Touchdown. Now well, we're back in 
Remnants. Reminds me of played Ohio State a few years ago. This is this could really be an ending. We're waiting for Leah to have this kind of game to end the career here to actually beat an num unbeaten number two team. We'll see what happens. Since 1991, Viron Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the DC metro area and around the globe. Use Viron Forgates for your next IT project. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck the speed of the truck or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle, you're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. Part two of the post game show after the Loxley press conference, he was proud of the team, proud of the effort, but said what everybody knows, which is they just didn't get over the hump. And it's there. It's a same player led culture. They have to find a way in these games to actually get that breakthrough win. And it seems like they keep getting closer. And today was close enough, but could not get it done. Look, the defense only gave up 20 points. The defense played a fantastic fourth quarter, kept Michigan 0 for 6 down the stretch, and the offense just couldn't get that done. But they only gave up 20 points, 11 of the points, two safeties. What an oddity that is to have a game where you give up two safeties. Lee has fumbled for a touchdown, so that's a total of 11 points on the offense. Uh, pretty good job. Uh, I talked to Bo Braid uh, about how he was keen, how aggressive he played, and they really stopped the running game for Michigan fairly well. So you got to be proud about that. I'm not really sure where to go with this because you play these games, you're in a conference much like the ACC was with basketball uh, back in the good old days when you were always playing top schools and it gave you the opportunity to beat them. So Gary Williams beating all those number one teams doesn't happen if you don't play the number one teams. In football, clearly the opportunity is here. you got Ohio State, you're going to have Oregon, you get Washington next year, USC, UCLA, of course Michigan today. The opportunities are there. And when the team plays like it does today, like it did today, and you just needed one more drive, you need to stand up one more time, you could see that it's possible, yet it just hasn't happened yet. So you want to be hopeful. You want to say that this is something that's going to happen here. But historically, it just hasn't happened, and I'll use yet. But you see them today. You saw them play Ohio State last year. You saw them play Ohio State here four or five years ago when they lost in overtime. And you say it, it is possible. So I'm going to say hopefully in my lifetime, we're going to come in here and we're going to do what some of these other Big Ten schools have done, your Purdue's, your Iowa's, and they go out and win these games and are you 11 and 0 12 and 0 team no but when you have the opportunity to take an undefeated team at home as the season winds down you find a way to win the game and with that uh, we will leave you from cq stadium for this season uh, we will see you down the road rutgers game and then the bowl game for mason for bruce this is wayne viner signing off for the home season of Maryland football. The Terps go down to Michigan today. Close one, just couldn't get it done. Good evening from College Park.